The luxury that most Japanese RPGs have is the convenience of the turn-based combat system, being able to issue commands and fight at one's leisure. However, with games like Xenoblade Chronicles 2, players may feel a little uneasy with its combination of heavy MMORPG influences, real-time battling, and seemingly heavy user interface. Thankfully, we're here to make sense of it all and make you battle-hardened regardless of where you fall on the spectrum of experience. This is Matt from New Game Plus, and this is how to handle combat in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. First things first, checking the interface before diving headfirst into combat is a good approach. Investigating the enemy information before attacking by pressing R will allow you to target enemies, check their title, level, and by checking to the right of their name, can note their elemental weaknesses based on which icon that appears. For example, if there's a fire icon, let Pyra off the leash for some serious damage output. A good rule of thumb is to prevent as many enemies fighting you at once, so luring each one individually will increase your chances at success. This can be done by targeting an enemy from a distance and pressing down on the D-pad. During battle, the party gauge on the top left-hand corner is used for a wide range of defensive or offensive maneuvers, so keep an eye on that early game as it can be used to revive party members who have fallen. Once you're in combat, it's important to note a few basics. Arts are charged through auto attacks and the amount required is different depending on each art. Specials can then be used after a certain amount of arts are used and can be stacked from level 1 to 3. In order to use a level 4 special such as Pyra's Burning Sword, you must attain max affinity with your blade and keep in close proximity during battle. Blade arts and battle skills are passive abilities automatically triggered by the blade's AI. This will help with certain skills such as improving attack accuracy or temporarily powering up arts usage. Once you have more than one blade active in your party, blade switching is an important skill to utilize, where arts will be ready for use and the other blade is tagged out. Keep in mind that blade switching will alter your elemental properties such as strengths and weaknesses, change from pyra to a wind elemental and your attacks will be wind based, though this may not be the best approach when facing an enemy that, for example, could be earth based. For those who might not be too familiar with MMORPGs, you'll need to be aware of the aggro marker. Pay close attention to a red ring below your party members. If there's a red ring along with a golden wedge pointed towards a nearby enemy, that means that party member is currently being targeted. To prevent further targeting, take a more defensive approach or use an art to decrease aggro such as rolling smash. One more important skill is performing cancel attacks. If you perform an art as soon as an auto attack connects, you will cancel attack. Not only will you maximize your damage output when completing a full attack cycle, the cooldown for each art will decrease compared to not performing a cancel attack. To confirm whether or not you landed one, just look for the blue radial light that emanates from the party leader immediately after the art is triggered. This comes in handy later on when you need to use enough arts to trigger a special or time a blade combo which appropriately brings me to a more advanced combat maneuver. At first, blade combos are a bit difficult to pull off, but with a bit of practice, will become integral in your rotations of taking down tougher enemies. In order to establish a blade combo, you'll need to ensure your teammates have enough meter in their special gauge to pull off a level 1, level 2, or level 3 special depending on the situation. When initiating a blade combo, pay attention to the portraits of your teammates along with their special move titles on the left or right of the screen. If your teammate specials are still charging, a snake-like icon will be circling each one of their character portraits, corresponding to the level that they're currently on. Level 1, you'll see one streaming icon. If you're on level 2, you'll see two. And you guessed it, if they're on level 3, there'll be three circling their character portrait. Once it is ready, the prompt to press ZL or ZR will appear. As the party leader, you can check your current special charge meter on the bottom right of the screen, to the right of your currently equipped arts icons. To successfully pull off a blade combo, the initial special must be level 1, the second a level 2, and the final one a level 3. Once the first special lands, a combo list will appear on the top right of the screen that will show what paths you can take to trigger what's known as a ceiling effect. After the stage 3 special drops, this will result in inflicting a ceiling effect, causing mass amounts of damage and status ailments based on the element of the blade that was used to deliver the final special. If you are fighting an enemy with a lot of HP, try to switch up ceiling effects when initiating another blade combo, as enemies will build resistances towards the elements that have already been used in the form of orbs. 
Another important gauge to watch is located just above the enemy's name on the top right. If that gauge depletes, the combo stage will be reset and will have to be started again. If you get to the next stage, the gauge will revert back to full, allowing you more time to complete the combo efficiently. For longer fights, you may want to rid of those pesky element orbs. That's where chain attacks come in handy. These can be initiated by pressing plus when the party gauge is full and allows all party members to attack an enemy with a selected blade and its element. Chain attacks are best used to break element orbs that provide elemental resistance to previous ceiling effects placed during blade combos. To break them, use the opposing elements. For example, use fire against a water orb, wind against earth, light against dark, and so on. From there, you can continue piling on the same ceiling effects as soon as you possibly can. To put what we've learned into practice, try a level 1 water special, level 2 earth special, and then a level 3 wind special on winged enemies for a good blade combo that exploits the elemental weakness of that enemy type. Another good habit to get into is to use as many arts as you possibly can in quick succession to reach the highest level special, then blade switching and bringing it out once your teammates have triggered level 1 and 2 specials by your command. Once blade switching cooldown is complete, you'll more than likely have a level 3 special at the ready. At the very least, you'll have a level 2 special that can be bumped up to the final level by abusing all of the arts that will be available simultaneously. If you're still unsure how blade combos work, the best training dummies to get a feel for the timing and implementation of ceiling effects are unique enemies, or a pack of the same enemy type slightly above or the same level as you. As long as the enemy you select has a higher than average HP pool, it's more than enough good practice, especially if you want to explore some of the combinations of ceiling effects you have at the ready. And that just about wraps up our spin on some of the basic and advanced nuances of combat in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. For more Xenoblade and video game related content, be sure to like and subscribe to us here at New Game Plus TV. Thank you very much for watching.